My name is Klaus. I'm working with Alex in the architecture team. And I'll talk about breaking down our biggest monolith into a modular microservice. Um, just quickly first describing what the monolith is and the microservice. I guess most of you know it, but just in case. A monolith, basically you have all your code in one repository and you produce one executable binary and that's what you run. And for a microservice, you split different services into separate uh, repositories, code packages, and you compile different pieces and you put them together to build your application. And there are pros and cons of both of these ways. For monoliths, it's of course a big advantage that you have a lot of tools that are built for build making monoliths. Most IDEs and tools are just simple to work with. It's easy to develop. And it's simple to deploy. You have one executable and you run it. Uh, and it's simple to scale in some ways. You just put the load balancer and start more instances of your app. You just have your app. But it's hard to scale development. If you're 30 people and you're all committing to the same code base, you start blocking each other, you're waiting for pull request reviews, you have tests failing because someone else pushed something. Com continuous deployment is difficult, somewhat for the same reason. You need to test everything for even a minor change. You're not sure what it affects. Scaling the application enough can be a problem. If you have a single feature that's the bottleneck in performance, you need to scale the whole infrastructure for every time you need to have more versions of your app. And difficult to scale the database. If you start in a simple way and just have one app, you probably just have one database. And if you suddenly realize you would need more database resources, it's not so easy to just split it apart. For microservices, of course, it's an advantage each service can be deployed independently. You just need to scale up the parts that are under highest load, so you can easily auto-scale where you need to. It's easier to scale development for the same reasons. You're not, no longer blocking each other. You just keep, and you only need to test the part that you're actually working on, not the whole <coughs> system. And one part is often overlooked, improved fault isolation. When you run in production, you have a monolith, and you start using too much memory or something, then the whole app is down. If one part of the microservice stops working, maybe the main notification or some part, yeah, the rest of the app will still run with a bit reduced functionality if you have collect, uh, correct circuit breakers and so on, but you're not completely down. But for microservices, it's definitely more complex to run them. To start your app locally, you might need to start four or five different services just to have the normal functionality. And you need more infrastructure. You need to have some kind of service discovery, you need to have load balancing, auto-scaling, and so on. And it's more complicated to deploy. If you have your monolith, you just push your binary and run it. If you have five services, you have to start in the correct order, and they need to contact each other, and it's more work. And it's more complex to monitor. Instead of just having one place, one log file, and just run that, you have to keep track of a lot more network traffic, more logs, services disconnecting from each other, and so on. And quickly, AppGrid. That used to be our biggest monolith here at Exido. Uh, it's a service to handle app configuration, content management, analytics, basically a backend for our apps. So you do configuration changes, and then the user starts their app, and we get the latest stuff. And uh, right now, we have around half a billion requests each month. And that's four times as much as last year. And it works fine. But uh, we expect it to continue to grow like this so that we need to prepare to be able to scale it even more. And uh, the old architecture of AppGrid, typically our app, a big monolith, executable jar, we run it. And we have API nodes and admin nodes. So basically, yeah, we have the web UI and we have REST API going to cache and a database. And then we have some other stuff like RabbitMQ, uh, Redshift for more analytic stuff, but yeah, this is the base app. And what did we want to have instead? We really needed increased scalability, and in particular for session handling, because that's how we track our users, how we keep sure they're allowed to use it and all of that. And we want to enable new features as microservices, so not keep adding to the monolith and just start a new separate service and be able to have all the user tracking and session handling in front of that. So the decision was to add a session proxy in front with its own session store. So we now keep track of users up there. We still have the basic monolith behind it. 
in a database and cache. But now we can have another instance of the whole app. Still handling sessions and just keep reading more instances. Yeah, there. And we could also add separate service, same session. And yes, how? We built just a new, a new Spring Boot app to handle just the session storage and yeah, this is keeping track of users, basically a new database for that. And of course, remove the session hand from the monolith, so we have those as separate part. And we repackage the monolith into Spring Boot apps. So we now have a standard configuration for most of our apps. And instead of having the same everywhere, we have a web UI part, and we have the API part, and we have some logs and other stuff. And what did we gain when we did this? Faster development. AppGrid already had two teams working in the same code base, but separate Jira boards and separate issues. And yeah, they're no longer conflicting as much. It's easier and more automatic deployment. We spent a lot of time on that, how to package it, to keep the tests running and so on. And you can scale service by service instead of just having to scale the whole app. And like we talked about, <laughs> before we had everything, like all of up, app grid running in North America. If we now have a lot of views in Australia, it's not so efficient latency-wise, we can set up another instance of app grid there and have the sessions and everything replicated. And if we want to add a new service for some specific task, put it behind the session proxy and we keep the user count and tracking and sessions as it is. And what have we learned doing this? All services might fail, so be prepared. You need to keep track of it and use circuit breakers. We use Hystrix, kind of the Netflix stack. Just, yeah, if something's starting to misbehave, cut it off and fall back on something better <laughs> or something less risky. And split the monolith, it's hard. You have to think a bit first. You can't just do everything. And either, I guess, take something easy, like some mailing service or something, just move that part out, or like we did take the bottleneck the main problem and start working on that and you really have to monitor everything because you will get logs spread out everywhere you will have services not connecting correctly or so on so and network latency might show up and spring boot just reduced the amount of config a lot you have a good base thing if you use the app just set it up with spring boot and you have all the configuration in the same place and you know how it works so that's helped us a lot thanks I think we started discussing it before Christmas and uh, started working like in January. And yeah, right now it's Everything looking. Is on not everything, but it's looking pretty nice. <laughs> so yeah, a few months. It's not huge. Mm -hmm. But it's still a lot to do. I mean, there are more parts to pick apart, pick out. Okay.